Oh! Uh... Oh, I have the freak. <laughs> I had uh, I had Twitch echoing back. Anyway, hello everybody. Welcome, Wolf Den Podcast. How you doing? I hope First you try. First try, and First nothing try. went bad even after that. Yeah. Uh, how you all doing, everybody? I hope you're good. I'm good. How are you, Will? Good. I you can't see it on camera, but I busted out the shorts because it's hot today. Uh, uh, very nice. It, it, is, it is. It is officially. It is officially summer. I have declared it summer. Um, I don't have my tea. I have water instead. I put the oh. AC in the baby's room because uh, no, nah, not about this life. I have a beautiful cold brew going on right now in my in my Bob Ooh. always loses in the gulag mug, which is not true. <laughs> I've never lost before in my life. Uh, look at this nonsense though. I got a nice uh. I got a nice, uh, what do you call it? What do you call foam. it? Yeah, I got a cold foam going on. I made it with a whisk. You know, milk yes. cold foam. And uh, put, this is a brown sugar. This is a maple brown sugar cold brew. Brewed brewed the cold myself. Nice. I haven't tried it yet. This is, it could uh, be terrible. From the br this is from the Brita filter. Ah, in your alien That is uh, actually... Yes, that we got from uh, Luke, who runs the Georgetown University track and field <laughs> Twitter account. <laughs> anyway, guys, I wish I could tell you there's a lot to talk about. There's not. <laughs> this is a surprisingly sucky week. But, uh, you know what? Slow news week is good. I think that's good for everybody. Unless your business is news, yeah. then that's a problem. Yeah. Uh, I close well, the door. It's immediately hot in here. I got the freaking. Yeah. I had the air on. Whatever. I got yeah. I got my fan going because again, I'm, not about this hot life. I'm gonna turn on this air conditioner in two seconds. I'm sorry, audio listeners, but uh, we have to talk about Sonic Three and Knuckles coming back because we have a lot to say on that. Oh yes, we're big fans here. That's a big deal to us. Mm -hmm. it might not be a big deal Very to big you, deal. but we're gonna try really hard to make it a big deal to you. <laughs> uh, anyway. Thank you very much. Razzle Jazzled for the Prime subscription of eight months. Edward Bova with the host. Thank you. Raul Kemp with a Prime subscription. And Migs Luna with four months. Hello, Bob. Why, Will? <laughs> Hello. It's like that. And in a language. <laughs> L, a language. Yeah. Will, you're on Firefox now because you think that'll help your uh, your issues? That has nothing yeah, to do with Discord, right? No, it has nothing to do with this cord. It has to do with, for some reason, Streamlabs will not open in Chrome for me. And also, Chrome is... I mean, everybody knows this. Chrome is a severe system hog. All it does is eat up whatever available RAM there is on your computer. So I'm using Firefox because A, Streamlabs works in it, and B, just to see if it'll make things easier on my end. Uh, of clicking articles and reading them and whatnot. Because you are a little so, choppy, but I mean, just the video really your okay. audio seems fine. When we when we when we tuned in, it was choppy for a second, but it could also be me. Yeah. Well, oh. this is coming through the Discord app. It's not coming through right the Discord website. I so. understand. Um, I'll say my cold brew is delicious. By the way. Uh, above heavens, thank you for the three months. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Thank you everybody hey. for your support and subscriptions and whatnot. Don't forget, you can go into the supporter only Discord now. You go to the discord.gg slash wolfden. You get in the supporter only Discord. I post videos early in there. I posted today's video at like four in the morning, which is <laughs> so early for me. Usually it's just a few hours. Willow, thank you for the eight months. He says piss. Oh yeah, we got new emotes, by the way. That's a that's a wolf I, emote. I, I did notice the piss. <laughs> <laughs> anyway check this out guys sonic 3 and knuckles is back let me tell you all about the history hey! of sonic 3 and knuckles especially here at the wolf den we have a fond history of sonic 3 and knuckles here at the wolf den uh so sonic 3 is a sega genesis game we're sega genesis boys here at the wolf den yes grew up grew up with the sega genesis uh in the big sega genesis super nintendo war of the 90s which many people in the chat were not a part of. Um, I know. It's so sad. we're basically, 
we're basically World War II veterans complaining to the kids that they don't understand. <laughs> you weren't uh, there, man. So most Sega Gen most Sega Genesis's came with Sonic the Hedgehog two. A lot of no. What most Sega Genesis came with Sonic one. By the time we got around to it, they all started coming with Sonic two. Everyone I, around our age group had Sonic two. I thought most people, people us had Sonic one. I thought most people got the Genesis with Sonic two, or am I just in a bubble? No, you're you're just in a bubble. Sonic like by the time one it became the, like a thing, people were buying Sonic two. Right, that's around our our age group. People a little bit older than us got the bundle with Sonic 1. Sonic 1 is the best-selling game on the Genesis, followed by Sonic 2, followed oh. by Aladdin. Aladdin's a great game. It is a great it's game. A, it's the, a the best version is on the Genesis. It's a different game than it is on the Super Nintendo. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm getting a lot of Sonic 1s in the chat. Uh, anyway, so uh, uh, listen, uh, controversial opinion, Sonic 1 is not great. I'd yeah. go as far as to say it's probably not that good of a game. <laughs> Sonic Sonic 1 is rough. Like, you play it now, it is rough. It's very yeah. hard, especially if you've never played a Sonic game before, it's very hard to pick up and play now because it, it moves slower. It's It just feels different. You can't spin dash. Uh, the one thing it did right that I wish the other games did was... To get to the bonus stage, collect 50 rings by the end of the level. Because all the other Sonic games, you have to hunt for how to get into the special stage. Right. That does yeah. get a little annoying. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I think a lot of why I don't like Sonic 1 is because it controls weird. But also, there's like a lot that I expect that I should be able to do that I can't. And I guess yeah. it became, things became Sonic standard later. And also just general video game design was weird when sonic 1 came out yeah um anyway sonic 2 great game fantastic uh, game i don't like it as much as sonic 3 and there's a lot of debate whether whether or not sonic 2 is better than sonic 3 or, or which, yeah. which one's better i think sonic 3 is far superior but i think sonic 2 is also great yeah sonic 2 introduced of course tails uh it introduced the spin dash which you cannot play a sonic game without it uh, it made the levels uh, more speed focused, but also had a good balance of platforming in them. Uh, it had maybe the best special stage out of the whole series. Certainly the most iconic with the half pipe. Right. Um, yeah. It, it 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 was it was good. Also, fun fact: it was the first game to not only standardize the Tuesday release for video games, but oh. also the first game to release worldwide on the same day. Oh, usually games, it's hard, to, like around the NES era, especially, it was hard to track yeah. down when games were released because they kind of just trickled out to stores. Yeah, and they would always release in Japan first and then like years later in the US. Right. Sonic 2, right. they specifically said it's going to come out on the same day, and we're going to call it Sonic Tuesday. That's lame. <laughs> That's the 90s, kids. Uh, but anyway, Sonic 3, what year did Sonic 3 come out? 94? I want to say. The yeah, 90, because Sonic 1 was 91, Sonic 2 was 92. 93, they took a break, and that was Sega CD, Sonic Spinball, and Sonic Chaos. And then Sonic 3 came out in 94. Here, here's me playing it on this here Twitch channel just two days ago. Because I was I, it's my go-to Sega Genesis game because it's, I, it's probably the best Sega Genesis game. Um, mm -hmm. The sprite work's incredible. You can't, I, I played a special stage right now, so you can't even appreciate the sprite work. Um, what, what else do I want to say about this game? Uh, somebody in the chat, uh, who was it? Ghostosaurus says Sonic 3 had the best music. Funny you say that. <laughs> uh, a lot of people say that's the reason why it hasn't been ported to anything else in a long time. Yes. Uh, it does have one of the best video game soundtracks, I think, ever. Probably. Oh, yeah. It's always within the top three for me. Um, but this game has 
I, we see Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 get ported all the time. There's a Genesis collection on the Switch, and it mm -hmm. notably leaves out Sonic 3. And it's be, it's be most people think it's because there's a weird licensing issue with the music. I'm expecting you to go on about why that is. Oh, I was, well, I wasn't, sh I wasn't sure if you wanted to get into the article or not but so the reason why people think that there's a licensing issue with the music is because famously sega worked with michael jackson the king of pop mr thriller himself um to work on the soundtrack for it now there's two stories as to why michael jackson wound up not being involved in the final product um you ask Sega, it's because this happened around the time of the uh, sex scandal where he was accused of uh, the, the first batch of pedophilia allegations with Michael Jackson. That's if you ask Sega. If you ask anybody close to Michael, they will say it's because he did not like the way his music sounded through the Genesis sound card. He did not like the sounds he was getting out of the Genesis sound card. And he didn't want his name associated with a less than seller product. Regardless of who you believe, uh, it was thought that Michael Jackson's music was removed from the final product. Turns out that's not the case. A lot of the songs in Sonic 3 still have the Michael Jackson touches here and there, like certain songs still have like his signature yeah! and woo sounds. Um, one song in particular, Ice Cap Zone, possibly the best song on the entire soundtrack is actually note for note, a song called Hard Times by the band The Jetsons, which was, I think, I don't know his position, but Composer Brad Buxer wrote that song for his band, The Jetsons, and then he composed it for Sonic 3 for Ice Cap Zone. Uh, and he was Michael Jackson's like composer at the time. So, and there's also there's also um, the end credit song of Sonic 3 is Stranger in Moscow, the Michael Jackson song. If you slow it down, it's note for note to Stranger in Moscow. The, the, you uh, can go there's all these other a, things. You can go down a YouTube rabbit hole of songs like this song uh, being compared to other Michael Jackson songs and stuff. Yeah. And uh, that composer, the guy who worked with Michael Jackson on a lot of stuff, um, I think he has he's been asked about this a lot. And he has yeah. given conflicting reports himself. Well, he, he basically came out and he said that, yeah, basically the music that we did for Sonic 3 did wind up in the game. Yeah. 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 It, 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 it's possible that um, they, Michael Jackson, the composer, worked on the music. Uh, Sega decided to split. And then Sega like left in some of it or tried to copy a lot of it and like tried to make it not so, you know, grimy uh, or, yeah. or, or not so uh, DMCA like. But um, we, we haven't seen there's throughout. Nobody ever gave like a like a like a hard like this is exactly what happened. Um, yeah, there's always been conflicting reports. It, it actually, the fact that Michael Jackson even worked on the soundtrack at all was unconfirmed for a really long time until just a few years yeah. ago. Um, but everybody always had suspicions that that was the case. Uh, but again, you can go down a YouTube rabbit hole of everybody trying to trying to uh, uh, Pepe Silva it, trying to put all the pieces together, yeah. trying to find what what song sounded like Michael Jackson. Um, but. Uh, the fact of the matter is the soundtrack's incredible and that's probably why because michael jackson worked on it um but we haven't seen this game ported since uh 2000 and 2011 it was uh, the pc yes. port and i believe the steam port the steam port and i believe that port had different music well okay so here's it, it there was a pc port back in 97 okay. called the sonic and knuckles collection that port had different music for a lot of the songs, including Ice Cap Zone. It was said at the time that the reason why the PC port from 97 has different music is because, you know, sound cards at the time 
for PCs couldn't do certain things that Genesis sound cards can do. And those songs took advantage of the Genesis sound card in a way that couldn't be transported to a PC sound card. Which That which was the excuse a, at the time. Which is a major lie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the computer should be able to do anything that a Sega Genesis could do, as even yeah. in 1997. Yeah. Uh, I want to play uh, Launch Base. Launch Base is Michael Jackson just er all yes. over it. Um, Because it has the woos and yeahs in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, so you think the C port had the right music? Is that what you're saying? Or I you're, think so, because... Sure? I'm not sure because the Steam port was part of, I forget what it's called. But I think I think they called it the Genesis Collection. And I think those are supposed to be uh, perfect ports of the Genesis games, like perfect emulation of the Genesis games. So I think that's, I think that has the correct music mm -hmm. in it. Um, if anyone Medis can confirm that in the chat. Medicine just says, it's not really a lie. Genesis has a unique FM synthesis system that even modern emulators can't perfectly copy. You what know, that's not, that's not wrong. Because uh, there are a lot of like Genesis emulators for computer that do have uh, sound issues with Genesis games. Just play it MP3, please. What's so hard about that? Um, so... Uh, uh, Maybe we should just get into the article because I feel like we're gonna we're giving away a lot that's already in the article. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, we haven't seen a port of this game since since 2011, and the ports that we did see are, are like w weirdly different. Also, notably, Sonic and Knuckles, which we we didn't even talk about. Sonic and Knuckles yeah. is an expansion on Sonic Three. Is it the first expansion pack for a console? It is. As far as i can tell so sonic 3 was its own game sonic and knuckles was its own game but sonic and knuckles had a port on the top where you can you, you attach sonic 3 to it and then put that in your genesis and you get what is colloquially known as sonic 3 and knuckles because th that was intended to be one game but due to time restrictions they had to split the game in half so they released instead of just releasing sonic 3 at like the combined Sonic 3 and Sonic Knuckles, they released Sonic 3 first, and then they released Sonic and Knuckles a few months later. Uh, I didn't know it was just a few months later. Um, yeah. Sonic 3 is already a really, it's, it's a pretty decently sized game for, for yeah. a Genesis game. Uh, it's like a, it's a full-fledged game. It, it doesn't feel like they left anything out. Sonic and Knuckles feels like another full-fledged game, but you yeah. put the two together and you have even they work together in, in a really cool way like you you can play as knuckles and sonic 3 all of a sudden they basically add a dlc character um yeah <laughs> you can play through all of sonic 3 and then continue on to sonic and knuckles and it does some different stuff and you um, can play it as sonic as tails or as knuckles if you pick knuckles you can go through different routes not available to sonic or tails yeah, it's like it, it was incredible, especially back then. Yeah. You you don't get you you never. This sounds totally normal to us now, but you never yeah. got an expansion like that. Especially you have the game; it's in your hand, and now all of a sudden they're like, "Put this on it; it'll change everything." And that's and as a bonus, if you put Sonic Two into the Sonic and Knuckles card, you can play as Sonic. You can play as Knuckles throughout the entirety of Sonic Two. And, and Sonic 2 obviously came out way before that. So it's yeah. like it, you're like changing the code of a game. It, it was it was it blew our little tiny brains. And yeah, a lot of you probably already know this, but we but if you didn't know this, I want I'm trying to convey how blown our minds were back then. Um, anyway, that's why we love these games so much. Uh, Sonic 3 is one of my favorite games of all time. And it's a shame that it hasn't been able to be ported at all since 2011. And even the ports we got before that were weird. Everything's been a little weird about this game. Um, I, this is probably also in the article, but um, Christian Whitehead, who's one of the guys who worked on uh, Sonic Mania, uh, he got that job because he ported Sonic 1 and 2 to, to and iOS. first. First he ported Sonic first he ported Sonic CD to iOS by himself. Mm -hmm. 
He took it to Sega and said, look what I did. And Sega said, okay, do it for real this time. Uh, then they asked him to do Sonic 1 and 2. Then he did Sonic 3 by himself. And Sega said no. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> Sonic 3, again, the best of the bunch. And yeah. S- Sega's been weird about it. And honestly, it's if I had to guess, it's probably they're afraid of getting sued by the Michael Jackson yeah. estate or whatever. Um, and and I don't blame them for being afraid of that. But yeah. again, I mean, I mean, the music's one of the best things about the game. But uh, well, we could settle for like a jank, weird sort of music. Anyway, let's let's get into the article. Okay. Uh, this year marks Sonic the Hedgehog's 30th anniversary. Sega has previously said it's got some exciting news that it can't wait to share and has told fans to expect plenty of major announcements, including new games, digital, digital content, and more. There's already been a rumor about the 2010 Wii and Nintendo DS title Sonic Colors being remastered. I confirmed it. Uh, <laughs> now, now leaker Zippo is claiming that Sonic 3 and Knuckles will be making a comeback in a new Sonic collection. This was the information shared over their blog page, over on their blog page. It's back, and I promise you that I'm not shitting you. It was thought to be impossible, but it's coming. There will be some changes, though, more soon. The reference to it being impossible is likely tied to the legal issues surrounding the music in Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Some of the tracks were apparently composed by Michael Jackson, but went uncredited. In an attempt to not go off on a tangent here, it seems Sega would have finally worked out a way to revive this classic. Zippo is the same leaker who earlier this week backed up some rumors about the return of Donkey Kong. What do you make of this latest rumor? Do you see Sega reviving Sonic 3 and Knuckles for the Bluebirds 30th anniversary? Uh, Yeah, we're not afraid to go off on tangents here. <laughs> nope. Why you listen to us? Oh, that's weird that they linked... Why'd they link Liam Robertson's tweet and not that, not Zippo's thing? That's weird. Mm. Uh, uh, that's all he said. All this, this guy Zippo only said it's back, and I promise you, I'm not shitting you. That's all. That's li- yeah. it's a little gif of of the Sonic Three and Knuckles uh uh, uh title screen. Yeah. Uh, so literally, all of this rumor is just from this guy who has leaked things before. Yeah. And that we're just going off of that, I guess. And it's his freaking blog spot page. <laughs> um the title of it is The Next Game in the Sonic Collection is. In the Sonic Collection? Oh, I guess they mean like the Ages collection. Well, I think they the, the Ages line of Genesis games on Switch, I think they like put a put a hold for now Mm -hmm. i think this is supposed to be like a new collection of just sonic games that's the way i took it well there is a new sonic game coming out i think they said they were gonna do another forces type game and another mania type game i think that's all i heard heard, all i heard was the sonic colors remaster right right um I don't know. I don't know what Sonic's doing. I wish that they would let the Mania team do a 3D Sonic game, like I, l- like like a Sega Saturn style 3D Sonic. Yeah. Game. Like, what if they made Sonic 3D on the Sega well, Saturn? Yeah. Have you seen that fan made game called Sonic Utopia? Yes. No, so- Sonic Omens. That's the one I'm thinking of. Sonic. I have Omens. not seen Sonic Omens. Sonic Omens has had gotten a lot of like positive reaction on twitter and in the fan sphere but it's also uh causing a lot of controversy because they're they have like they have a crowdfunding thing going they're accepting donations Ooh. and yeah a it's big just like sonic point. forces am i look at the wrong thing uh you're looking at i think the story that's not what i saw of it okay But yeah, because somebody from Sega actually came out in like support of fan games completely. So as long as oh. you, you don't the, the the longstanding thing with Sega and fan games has always been this is what I've seen. This is what I've seen. This looks like Forces. <laughs> I mean, it, it it looks better than Forces, 
but the, it look, yeah, no, this the, looks the UI than and forces. everything looks like forces. The UI is forces, but that whip swing that he has is Sonic Boom of all things. That's a boot. Well, because that was also it. Well, one the 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 create a character had had a. Oh, that's right. I forgot like you that. create your stupid character in that <laughs> game. Anyway, Sega has maintained a policy of we don't mind if people do fan games. We're cool with that. We just would ask that you don't do it for profit. Right. And so somebody asked about accepting donations and like crowdfunding and stuff, and they said that's a gray area. We would suggest don't do that. <laughs> I I think that's a great answer, honestly. Like, yeah, I think that Sega has a really good stance on on uh, yeah fan creation. Sega- I mean, and thank God because uh, that's all they have with Sega. All they have with Sonic right now is the the great like fan base and, and community yeah. of people working on stuff because they're not doing a good job <laughs> themselves. Yeah. I, you know, I think they're aware of that because, like, I, will, well, I think I put this in the keep and we'll talk about it when we get to it. But I think they're aware of the reputation that they have of not doing good by Sonic in particular, but, like, their other franchises in general. And I think they want to correct that. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I just don't know if they can <laughs> on on their own. I mean, like, I think most other companies would say that accepting donations is, is, you know, oh, they probably just wouldn't say anything and then sue the person, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so the cease fact, and desist, yeah. The fact that they said it's a gray, they mean, like, it's a case-by-case basis. Like, if somebody's, like, making yeah. a little bit of money from donations, like, they're not going to care. But if somebody's making, like, you know, tens of thousands of dollars from donations yeah. on their game that's, that's like, a porn Sonic game, they're probably going to have yeah. a problem with it. Um. So I think they have a pretty good sta- they have a pretty good stance on fan made stuff. I think they yeah. have a terrible stance on uh, <laughs> releasing AAA <laughs> Sonic stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, the, the moral of the story is uh, Sonic Three. I think is probably the best Sonic game ever created, uh, and it's. Finally, more people are going to have a chance to play it and experience why that game is so great. It, it. Mm-hmm. I, I know a lot of people, especially people who didn't grow up in that era, never got a chance to play it because it was. It's hard to port. You definitely didn't have a Sega Genesis, and a lot, a lot of people only see the Super Nintendo side of that console war. And I mean, yeah, a lot of the popular games from that era are on the Super Nintendo, and it's, you know. Looking back on it, it's easy to be like, yes, Nintendo won. Nintendo had all the good stuff. Let me just play the Super Nintendo stuff. Oh, that was on Genesis? It's probably garbage. But Sonic no. 3 is literally the best game that was out for the Sega Genesis. And <laughs> you ne- you might not have ever gotten a chance to experience it. Yeah. It is, like, like we said, it is available on Steam. So it is possible to play that. It's available on Xbox 360 which you can play on your Xbox One, so you can still purchase that and play that. Uh, it was available on the Wii. The Wii Virtual Console shut down, so you can't get it there. Um, it, it was available on the original DS as part of a four-pack with Sonic 1, 2, and Knuckles, if you can hunt that down. Uh, other than that, there really is no other way to play this game. You can purchase it with Knuckles for $5 on Steam. I did not know that. Steam. I think it's you. You have to buy them separately on the 360, and I think it's like ten dollars total. And you think you could still do that? I'm pretty sure you can. I just looked. I just um. Well, actually, I was looking this up before the show started. So, in order to buy the games, you have to, according to Microsoft's Ooh. web. If you go to if you go to Xbox.com, uh-huh. go to Xbox. Okay, so you're on. Marketplace.xbox.com. That's the 360 store. Right. Look at the look at the white screen they did. Look at the abomination yeah. they made out of yeah. my baby here. So if you just go to to xbox.com and search for it, mm-hmm. it will say buy this on xbox.com or 360 or your Xbox 360. You cannot buy this on Xbox One. Will it play? 
on Xbox One. Yes, I've I've played it on Xbox One, okay. and the lock on technology works. What does that mean? That's what they called linking Sonic Three and Sonic and Knuckles together. Oh. So wait. if you own Sonic Three and Sonic and Knuckles for the 360 or the Xbox One, you can play the complete game. Can you make it not widescreen? <laughs> yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. I, I was gonna say that's maybe don't get it, yeah. but that's good to hear. I mean, five bucks for that for both of those games. That's an incredible deal. Yeah. Uh. Sonic Ultimate Genesis Collection on 360 and PS3 says uh, Hustlin' on radio? Oh, that's the physical disc that they put out for uh, the 360 and PS3, yeah. I think my wife has that. I'm trying to see if it's available on the marketplace. Uh, I don't think... There's a did. demo! No, you can just get the demo. You can't actually purchase it. Yeah. But still, you can download the demo. I wonder what that does. Maybe it might just be like Altered Beast. Yeah, probably. Maybe you could play a little bit. This demo highlights. Yeah, okay. I don't. I don't know what it does, but give it a shot. Give it a whirl, maybe. Yeah. Uh, oh, he says you can buy it on Xbox One. Oh, because I'm still looking at okay. the Xbox Marketplace. Uh, Xbox, Xbox. <laughs> it's on Amazon. There you go. I can't find it. I'll take your word for it. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we get some news about that soon. I will buy it wherever it comes out. Hopefully it comes yeah. out on the Switch. Hands down. I saw something on Reddit today that was talking about how um, we don't need a uh, virtual console anymore because. Uh, publishers have taken that into their own hands um yeah i i kind of well that's what we like that's what we had been saying at least i've been saying it because like nintendo has their switch online games but like capcom didn't put the Mega Man games on there. They released the Mega Man games on their own. Konami didn't put the Contra or Castlevania games on there. They released those on their own. So, yeah, publishers have been taking, like, re-releasing their games into their own hands. Sometimes it works out. A lot of times it still doesn't, though. But that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, I... I mean, the way the virtual console worked on the Wii was just incredible. It had freaking everything. Um, yeah. And that's great. Uh, I think the way we do it now is fine also, but uh, I don't know which one I would... Pr like, I don't need a collection for every game I want to play. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I honestly don't know which which is better. But I do... But I don't like the way that the, that the Reddit post was phrased, we don't need a virtual console because we have this. It's it's kind of just like, this is what happened because we don't have virtual console. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, I guess it's, like, I'm fine with how it is, I guess. Um, I think the way it worked was uh, all these publishers were just wondering what Nintendo was going to do, waiting for the virtual console to happen. Just like a lot of us, we kept calling it virtual console. And then when they announced Nintendo Switch Online, all of these publishers were like, well, I guess we'll just do it then. Yeah. <laughs> and then they made a boatload of money. Anyway. Uh... Donations. What do we got? We got uh oh we're we're behind by a lot here. <laughs> Mecha Dragon, thanks for the Hundo. Gamer Lady, thanks for gifting a sub to a kid at heart. K9 Cantina, thank you for the 45 bits. Mecha Dragon with 20 bits. In case my message gets lost in the chat, do you bros have a preferred amount you want us to send in bits? Um a dollar, like one hundred bits, uh usually gets read by the little italian bot so i prefer that when i'm not doing the podcast uh if we get too many bit donations i will only read ones that are 100 bits or, or more but we don't so you could just send as many as you want uh game related x for the four game related x for the two months love your podcast don't always catch it live but i see it on youtube each week that's fine as long as you watch it somewhere yep 
Kate, thanks for the hundo. Sonic 3 game out of game of the year. I did what? Oh no, I'm I'm stupid. Sonic 3 came <laughs> out the same year I did. LOL. Ugh. Well, when when did it come out? 94. That's not that much younger than me. <laughs> At least it's, it's younger than me. <laughs> um I came out when when the the Game Boy came out. Did you Will did you, yes, last Bob. week we talked about remember I wanted a case for my for my Game Boys. Yes, and I saw you got them. Look at this. These are these are gorgeous little plexiglass cases I purchased from somebody on Etsy. You can go to my Twitter to find the link if you want something like this. Um, they're beautiful. Yeah, I got three of them because I wanted. I really just wanted it for this because I keep getting dust all over my custom yeah. Wolf Den Game Boy, and now it looks so fancy in here. I'm debating whether or not I should get those myself because right now I have them on. Uh display stands made by rose color gaming who also have an etsy store um and they're beautiful stands they're great they hold everything up but they get dust on them so yeah that's my that was my biggest yeah. problem uh you told me to get the uh game boy color one for my game boy light and it fits great yeah. i'm wondering how a game boy color would fit in here oh my god i don't I almost freaking dropped it all over the floor well i mean it's got that battery bump I don't it, think a Game Boy Color is that. It actually it fits perfectly. Yeah. Well, yeah. The the light has like, actually, it's like the same. Yeah. Yeah, because I think the Game Boy Pocket ran on AAA batteries, and then the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Light both run on double A's. Yeah, it's like the same bump. Yeah. Just a just a. It's got an actual butt compared compared, yeah. to, compared to the Game Boy Color. Anyway, I don't remember where we left off here. Uh, Kate, uh, uh, Dark Type, thanks for the hundo. No way, I was just listening to the soundtrack coming home from work. LOL, this is my favorite video game of all time. If this came can come to the modern day consoles, I will die a happy man. I might buy that on every console it comes out on. I... Uh, this would be your Resident Evil 4. <laughs> Migs Luna, thanks for the hundo. Yeah, I meant to say, Bob and Will, why is and in Spanish? I was thinking in uh, Spanish for some reason. I don't know why I thought in Spanish and is E. I know that's in Italian. Yeah. And is E. I guess Spanish and Italian are basically the same language, so I just assumed E was the same. Spanish and Italian blur together to me. Yeah. When when I'm when I'm taking my Japanese class, my teacher every class he he wants me to like say numbers, so he'll write numbers in the chat. And almost mm -hmm. every time, I thought the last time he did it, he he typed it out in the chat, and I just went six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wood enthusiast, thank you for the two months. Here is my prime sub. I've been. Thank you, wood enthusiast. Is that are you like a beat 'em up fan? Uh, <laughs> Meta Sanchez, thanks for the bit. Thanks for the two bits. How about that? How about suck on that, dude? Um, oh, neglecting to set up. Okay, Wood. Well, thank you. Thank you, Wood Enthusiast, for the two months. And Seaside, Seaside Paradise. Paradise. Thank Happy you for three the, months. Thank you. For thank three you. Months. I appreciate it. Uh, all right. Now that we're caught up with that. Yeah. We got more Sega news. I know everybody just loves Sega so much. Yeah, man. You got to understand. Everybody loves up, Sega. We grew up with Sega, loving Sega hard for yeah. a lot of our childhood. And then all of a sudden, Sega died. <laughs> we witnessed the death I mean, of Sega. We did. It was, I mean, it was a self-inflicted wound. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, they did their best to rally in the end with the Dreamcast, but by that point, it was too late, man. And we're part of the problem, because we didn't have a Dreamcast. Not until after the fact. Not until it was way dead. Yeah. Um, but boy, did we want one. Yes, we did. I was Anywho. promised a Dreamcast if I got an A in a math class, and I did, and Mom went 
back on it. She yeah, said, I never said that. And I said, I did all this so I can get a Dreamcast. And then from that point on, I did terrible in school. And it's all because of that. Our mother had the habit of promising us something if we did good in school and then finding the, the smallest loophole <laughs> possible to renege on it. And so finally, at one point, she said, all right, if you do good, I will get you an iPod for Christmas. So I stopped her and I said, you don't have to because I figured you out, mom. You're going to say this, but then something else is going to happen. And you're going to go back on your deal. And I I understand that you've taught me. This is your way of teaching me how to deal with disappointment. So thank you. And she gave me this look like, oh, shit, he's on to me. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. She gave me this look like, oh, he figured it out. So he tried to like say, no, no, that's not what I'm doing. Like, I, get, I understand, mom. You don't have to get me an iPod. It's okay. There, I have there accepted was... it. I am at peace. There was a point where I made her sign a piece of paper once. And I think it might have been about the Dreamcast. And she still was I, I like, know. no, I, you're not getting it. I believe you. <laughs> anyway. uh, take it from us, kids. Parents just don't understand. No. A financial be... res... <laughs> go, go, go. A financial results presentation has revealed that Sega is considering reboots of Crazy Taxi, Jet Set Radio and other dormant IP while it begins work on a super game. At a results presentation to mark the end of the fiscal year was published by the Sega Sammy Investor Relations website today. The slideshow includes a number of interesting details about the company's future plans. One slide concerns the utilization of IP, intellectual property assets, noting which IPs are active and dormant and how Sega plans to remaster, remake, or reboot older series to capitalize on the globally recognized IPs in its it has in its fault. A number of old fan favorite franchises are mentioned in the past group past IP group section, including including Crazy Taxi, Jet Set Radio Knights, Space Channel 5, Panzer Dragoon, and Rez. At the very least, this suggests that the company is interested in bringing some of these games back to the market while strengthening its active IPs such as Yakuza, Persona, and Sonic. And uh, it has the picture of all the games that are uh, they're thinking about. Uh, what are you... Oh, you're playing the... Oh, you know, baby. Uh, yeah. Examples of... Side active... note. Yes. Uh, apparently, when I text my friends about... Jet Grind Radio. Jet's, Jet Grind Radio is what we call it in America. It's called Jet Set Radio in Japan. Whenever I text my friends about Jet Grind Radio, I type it out as Jet Grind Radio, all caps with a lot of O's. My, my phone now predicts that every time I type radio. <laughs> oh, just radio at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So. So. <laughs> right, that's enough of that. Um. So they have examples of active IP, and they have examples mm -hmm. of past IP groups. Crazy Taxi. Yeah. That's weird, because didn't that? Oh no, that was a there was a there was a spiritual successor type Crazy Taxi. Game. Yes, there there are three Crazy Taxi games. There was the classic for the Dreamcast that we all know that's been ported to a bunch of different systems. That's the one with the Offspring and Bad Religion. And if it doesn't have that on the soundtrack, don't get it. Um, there was a sequel on the Dreamcast, Crazy Taxi Two, and then there was a third game on the original xbox called crazy taxi 3 high roller took place in las vegas but those two and three have never been re-released uh one is the only game that gets re-released at all um res we saw on the uh the playstation vr so that's yes uh that's past ip they put panzer dragoon we just got a port for that didn't we we got a Switch remake, I think. Okay. There are other games in the Panzer Dragoon series, but I think the, the first one just got like a, a revamp of some kind to the Switch. Interesting that they're labeling some of these as past IPs. And House of the Dead, we're getting a remake that looks like well, trash. <laughs> well, House of the Dead and Streets of Rage, we're getting a new House of the Dead, and we just got Streets of Rage 4, but those were not made by Sega. Right, right. Those were licensed out to other companies. But it's still, uh, clearly, the, the license is still held by Sega. Unless they mean... Yeah. 
No, they have to be meaning that they still have the the license. Uh, I don't know what soul hackers are. Uh, I feel like I should know that. I liked Virtua Fighter. You did not like Virtua Fighter. No, I did not like Virtua Fighter 2 on the Sega Genesis. I, I liked the one that we had. That was the one on the Sega Genesis. I liked it. That game, that was bad. Virtua Fighter... Regular Virtua Fighter, the 3D Virtua Fighter, those games are fine. They're a little bit technical for my liking, but those games are fine. The one on the Genesis was slow, and when you jump, it was like you're jumping on the moon, um, and it was clunky to control. You know, it's Virtua Fighter was the first 3D fighting game. It was the first polygonal-based 3D fighting game and you port that to the Genesis for some reason as a sprite-based, slow-ass 2D fighter. J.P. Harrington Jr. in the chat says, Soul Hackers is a Shin Megami Tensei game. Yeah, I just looked it up. That's what that is. Um, Streets of Rage is not a past IP or, or dormant. Well, again, Streets of Rage 4 was not made by Sega. It was made by .emu, Lizard Cube, and Guard Crush Games. Yeah, but that was I don't 4. Know. I that's, know, but it's I like don't. A main game in the series. But I think, I think what the slide is trying to say is, they, they Sega has not made a game in the Streets of Rage series in a long time, and they want to try doing a Streets of Rage game. Shinobi is again one of the best games on the Sega Genesis. I would say Sonic Three and Knuckles, and then Shinobi Three is right there. No. Um, Shinobi Three. My opinion, the only good Shinobi game. <laughs> <laughs> they made one for the PlayStation 2, and it was okay. Uh, yeah. Shinobi, Sh Revenge of Shinobi was not that good. Uh, Shinobi 1 and 2 are not good. Um, Revenge of Shinobi is Shinobi 2. Oh, well, there you go. Um, they made a DS version of Shinobi 3. Uh, they yeah. like remade it and it wasn't very good i wanted to like it a lot but. shinobi is a series that they try every once in a while to bring back but it hasn't been as successful as it was on the genesis i'm hoping that they see the potential in games like cyber shadow and mark of the ninja and try to do something with shinobi or even ninja gaiden um yeah but it's an it's it's I mean, it's not really unfortunate. We've we've seen the Cyber Shadow and and the Messenger are. We got that out of it, out of the need yeah. of a ninja game like this. We got that out of it, so it's not so bad. Um. Anyway, what's the moral of this? They're looking into maybe making a Jet Grind radio game. <laughs> <laughs> the presentation also. The article continues. The presentation also mentions Sega Sega's five year plan to release what it calls a super game. While unclear oh. exactly what that term implies, Sega says it's making focus investment in the project and aims to have it released by 2026 fiscal year. Uh, as well as turning to existing active IPs into global brands, the company wants to create new IP which can be expanded globally, but which it does not ex expect to be immediately highly profitable. Immediately highly profitable. No details were given on which of Sega Studios would make the game, nor what kind of game it would be. Uh, John Got the Juice with 100 bits said, Did you see the spiritual successor to Jet Set Radio called Bomb Rush Cyberpunk? I have it playing on screen right yes. now. Yes. We talked yes. about this uh, on the show. Yeah. Uh, the original composer for Jet Set Radio is doing the music for this. Uh, is it in the trailer? I think so. I mean, it looks just like Jack Ryan Radio. Yeah. Um, I think you're free running instead of rollerblading. But... Oh. You got soap shoes, though, it looks like. Hell yeah, of course. Um, I, I think that there's room for some Jack Ryan Radio in our lives. Yeah. I, that, I would play another Crazy Taxi again. Well, I, I think that they came out with the, that like spiritual successor to uh, uh, Crazy Taxi, and it got bad reviews because it was probably just Jack. It was probably just Crazy Taxi. 
You gotta yeah. like you can't just have these games come like you can't just take an old game and make the same game again. You have to add some modern touches <laughs> to it. Um That's it, right? That's all we got on this? <laughs> yeah, that's all we got. <laughs> uh Rabo Raboss Manhill says, Whatever happened to your Genki Shadowcast review? People keep asking about this stupid thing. It's like, it's like, I get, like, I, I kind of get it. Like, cause it's, it's wireless, like HDMI basically. But mm -hmm. I, I kickstarted it. Like I didn't, I'm not getting like a, like a, like a review unit. Cause I, cause I trashed their friggin' doc and I don't think they liked that. But also I don't <laughs> like dealing with companies. I'd rather just buy it myself. So I kickstarted it. I'm waiting till I get mine. So uh when i get mine i'll i'll do a video on it but uh i'm still waiting just like i'm waiting for my fun key freaking kickstarted that in january <laughs> well i didn't even kickstart it i bought it after it that the kickstarter ended yeah and i still haven't gotten it yet um but i think this is good these are like the perils of 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 being a consumer for kickstarted stuff you're just never gonna get it it's gonna take yeah. months for you to get it um but I keep getting questions about this stupid Genki Shadowcast. It's making me resent it. <laughs> you might just have to bite the bullet. And what? And do a and do a video on it. I'm gonna do a video. I'm telling you, I'm waiting for it to come. I can't do the video until it comes. <laughs> I can't what am I gonna do? Make a video about right, right. Like, just an empty box? <sighs> that, that'd be a good April Fool's Day video. <laughs> Seaside Paradise, thank you for the three months. Uh, John got the juice. We read that one. And Mecha Dragon with the hundo. Going to Florida tomorrow, bros. Wish me luck. Some crazy S happens down there. Oh, we know. You bros oh, we know. have any advice on how to kill time on a three-hour plane ride? Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> Love. Make sure your devices are fully charged. Your phone, your Switch, your iPad. Three hours isn't that long on it. It isn't that long, so so like you could, you, I mean, it's, you could play a a premium Switch game, and your Switch yeah. won't even die. Um, also, here's a little fun thing I like to do since I have YouTube Premium. You can download YouTube videos onto your phone, so you can before you get on the flight, you can download a bunch of stuff and then watch them all on the flight. This podcast is at least two hours long. There's two hours right there. There you go. Uh, anyway, Squishy Ho with the Hundo bits. You should do a video on how you've received the gank, how you haven't received the Genki yet, and just go on a rant about all the things you haven't received yet. <laughs> it's actually not a bad idea. Right now, the YouTube algorithm is being really weird to everybody, and uh, it's time to experiment. Yeah. Um, I suspect the algorithm is being weird. Not because the algorithm is being weird. I suspect things are being weird right now because for the past year, the numbers have been inflated because everybody's been home with nothing to do but to watch YouTube yeah. videos. And right now, in the past week, it got nice out. Everybody started going out. So uh, I think it's literally just that you know, friggin' more people are going outside and not watching YouTube. But YouTube won't tell you that. They're not going to tell you views are down across the entire website. They're going to tell you you're doing bad because your views yeah. are worse than your <laughs> views were before. You're the problem, asshole. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, here's 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 a here's a little fun thing that that we always talk about. Uh, more stuff on xCloud coming to the Switch. We got more evidence that xCloud yeah. is coming to the Switch. We got Steven Totillo over here. Who does he work for now? Uh, Axios, Axios Gaming. Gaming. Uh, does he have an article on this? I... I don't think so. I'll mm. see if I can find it. Doesn't look like it. But anyway, here's the tweet. He said, Nintendo says these portions of an Xbox biz dev execs deposition 
in the Apple versus Epic. Now, now that I said that, we're going to get kicked off of the Apple podcast. Yeah. Uh, we're Again. F- anyway, deposition in the, the biz dev said, no, wait. Nintendo says these portions of an Xbox business development executive's deposition in Epic versus Apple reflect competitively sensitive information about negotiations between Nintendo and Microsoft. So they admitted that these are negotiations between Nintendo and Microsoft. She was primarily deposed about trying to bring xCloud to iOS and more broadly discussed console business. uh, Console business. So you see a giant redacted here and there's a lot of redacted. So basically it was redacted because Nintendo says that there's sensitive information here. And again, this is from a Microsoft business developer. Uh, So it says, okay, so your customers, there is demand from your customers on Xbox to have streaming available on mobile, including iOS. That's correct. Redacted. Have you been involved in them? I have not. Who Who's involved in those discussions? Primarily the Game Pass content team and other members of the gaming leadership team. So so I'm just curious. What, what about your job has you involved in the discussions to put streaming available on Apple on iOS, but not... Doesn't have you... Doesn't have you also in... It, this is the, the lawyer speaking, so it's hard to read it. Yeah. D- uh, what about your job has you involved in the discussions to put streaming available on Apple on iOS but not doesn't have you also involved with regard to the redacted guess what he was trying to say there and then the whole next page is redacted so that's presumably they're talking about putting xCloud on the switch and I guess they're talking about how that would have worked or maybe we were gonna get X Cloud on the Cybaco. Yeah. I think we're like one of five people who remember what that thing is. <laughs> well, I think we need to spread the word about the Cybaco, Will. Maybe I a have... Samsung smart fridge? I don't know. What else could it possibly Maybe. be? I don't know, man. You can play Cuphead in a Tesla. That's true. So X Cloud coming to a smart fridge sounds feasible. <laughs> or you could you could play uh you could play Skyrim on an Amazon Echo. Yes. Um so yeah, I guess there's no like full article about this, but basically we've heard about this before. We've heard about uh uh other other signs that X Cloud is probably gonna hit Nintendo Switch, or at least they're talking about it. I would imagine that yeah. Nintendo would want uh their hands all over it like they, they, they'd they want it to be on they would want x cloud to be on the switch on their terms and yeah i bet that microsoft is willing to play a ball because what do they have to lose probably a lot of money but i mean they got it so who cares yeah right yeah so. um and that's good news for everybody i think mm-hmm even if you have an Xbox. I mean, xCloud being able to play yeah. that wherever you want, that's great. Because then you won't even need yeah. Microsoft to have a portable console. You can just have your you Nintendo. Just use a Switch. Yeah. That's all That's all we got to say on that. Yeah. Uh, There's really not much to it. Lenosa says, Nintendo already has streaming on the Switch, Bob. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, well, Hitman I, 3. I can't believe it. I've never heard of such a thing. Um, well, if this opens the door for more games to be streamable onto the Switch, not just a select few that certain developers think are worthy to be streamable. Uh-huh. What, like a that's like a piecemeal type thing. Yeah. Uh, you bros have company. I hear people. Yeah, there's people in the. They just. They just entered the apartment. I'm sorry. I, I don't have soundproof. Well, I mean, it's like pretty damn soundproof in here. <laughs> so you're just going to have to deal with it every yeah. once in a while. Um. Anyway, we got a bunch of news about Mario Golf Super Rush this week. Yes. I actually have not seen the trailer yet. Uh, I don't think I saw, I saw a, a GIF of the new mode. <laughs> 
Uh, this game looks gorgeous, dude. Yeah. Uh, with just over a month to go until the launch of Mario Golf Super Rush, Nintendo has dropped all, an all-new overview trailer to teach us all about the game. The video goes over gameplay details, including techniques like curve shots and spin shots, reminds us about the optional motion controls, teaches us about some of the unique strengths on offer from individual characters and more. You can watch it for yourself above or check out this written overview if that's more your style. Uh, I'm going to read the written overview because that's what we do here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> speed golf in the new fast paced mode speed golf players tee off in unison and race through the course to sink the ball as fast as possible it's important to avoid the course's various hazards and collect items that regain stamina while sprinting to the ball players can also use special dashes and shots to swing victory in their favor if golf actually worked like that i might be more inclined to play it yeah, because uh, the way they show it in the trailer, it just looks nuts. Yeah. It, it, like, it, there is... I don't even know if there's a way to actually play golf like that, because golf courses are gigantic, and you pass out by the middle of the second hole. <laughs> so this is the speed golf. Yeah, they hit the ball, and then they immediately just start friggin' hoofing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's That looks really fun. Um, yeah. Battle golf. Now this I would also play. In Battle Golf, a more strategic variation of Speed Golf, nine holes are in play at the same time. The first player to score three of the nine holes claims the victory. So it's key to stay ahead of opponents or risk losing out. I don't think I quite get that one. Nine holes are in play at the same time. Oh, so I get not nine different holes. Nine holes are in play at the same time. The first player to score three of the nine holes claims the victory. So I I guess you can choose any of because it would be weird if people got different holes. Right? Yeah. Chat, clarify. Probably should have watched the video. That probably would have helped. Yeah. Rose also Rosalina floats and and she doesn't even touch her 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 her, her uh, what do you call it what's the tool golf club <laughs> golf club <laughs> um I think this is the battle golf no this is just regular golf I think oh you can play yeah. uh, King Babam or whatever the hell his name is anyway uh standard golf in standard golf every stroke counts and the lowest score wins wow amazing <laughs> um golf adventure solo players can go from rookie to pro when enrolling their me character at a country club in golf adventure that sounds great while interacting with familiar yeah. Mushroom Kingdom characters they can learn how to play and take on a variety of challenges gaining experience uh makes it possible to level up the character which can then be used in multiplayer modes what oh huh. interesting uh so you can build up your character in the, the campaign and then take that character online that's yeah, cool yeah but how because that's how you get into like weird territory like you don't want like a like a level one fight against a level 20 you know what i mean I'm sure, well, I don't, see, a normal game company would have ways to, you know, adapt to that and balance their game so that, you know, that doesn't happen. Nintendo is not a normal game company, and they don't really know how to do online very well. Right. I mean, maybe it's not like a, like a level leveling up sense in a traditional way. You know, maybe you get like an ability here or there that gives you a boost, but doesn't necessarily make you OP. Maybe it's a lot of it is cosmetic. No, it's just a thought. That that's I, that's what I'm hoping that maybe you just gain like uh like cosmetic items that you can then take online, not necessarily mm -hmm. that stuff. I get that Will's mic sounds weird. It does this all the time, dude. <laughs> get used to it. This is the Wolf Dead podcast. Things go wrong sometimes. You hear people in the other room freaking dog starts barking, dog comes in, starts eating yeah. my shoes. That's what, that's what happens here. 
I timed out David because he just uh, says too many words at once. <laughs> <laughs> then a million yeah. <laughs> different lines. You gotta, you gotta calm down, everybody. Um, Rock and Val, I can't scream. There's a baby asleep in the other room. Uh, Come on, man. Simple controls, simple button controls make it easy for new players and seasoned pros alike. It's as simple as taking aim, choosing the shot strength, and sending the ball flying, uh, you know, like in golf. Additionally, yeah. it's possible to use motion controls by holding a Joy-Con controller like a golf club. Uh, I hopefully will not be, I hopefully don't have to do that. Uh, like Mario sure. Tennis like forced you to do motion controls and I hope that they don't do that. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's cool to try once, but I don't know, doing that for the entire game. This ain't the Wii era anymore, people. I think I think Mario Tennis had um pro controller controls, but they like sucked. Yeah. Um Useful tools. Curving a shot is an effective technique to avoid hazards and putting a spin on the ball affects how it rolls after landing. Several features are on hand to help conquer the course, including a shot gauge that adapts to change the angle of the slope and a scan that makes it easier to read the terrain. Okay. Uh, tee off with family, friends, and familiar faces. Players can choose from a cast of 16 characters from the Super Mario series, each featuring different strengths and equipped uh, their own unique special moves. Pauline, Charging Chuck, and King Babam will make their first appearance in the series. Players can hit the fairway with up to three others, both locally and online, in different modes. So four players. Um, and it's got online, so that's great. Lavish locations from standard courses to courses with special hazards. Every round of golf is different. There, there is a variety of six locations to choose from. Six? Okay. Well, I mean, there's, I guess there's 18 holes, right? Unless there's nine. It's possible there's yeah. only nine holes. Um, that would suck. Uh, anyway, here's all the characters. Uh, no, Nothing really surprising here, except their cute little outfits. Pauline's there. Nice. We like Pauline. Pauline. There you go. Yeah. To Toad's got I a saw cute she little uses outfit. her mic stand. Yeah, she yeah. does. It's, she it's does a good lineup. Good lineup of characters. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's really it. Uh, and Rosalina. Rosalina is kind of a big deal in this. Yeah. Uh, everyone else, par for the course, if you will, right? <laughs> Uh, the yeah. Z for M forces by leveling up your character, you can add stats points to the stats you want, and every character has different stats. I hope that that's only on the single player because if you bring that online, that's kind of unfair. The football player is an interesting addition. Yeah, it's Charge and Chuck. Charge and Chuck. And there's just a boo. Yeah. Oh, and Kick Babam. That's kind of a big deal. That's a weird one. Yeah, I don't think he's been playable in a sports game. I hope they do more with him. In a sports game. Yeah. Because uh, where did I see him? I saw him recently. Oh, he was in friggin' Mario Party. He's, uh, he's on a map on Mario Party. Daisy's face sucks ass in this game. It says Kamara Rick. What's wrong with her face? What? Is it because she doesn't look like a palette swap of... of uh, Peach? What's the problem? She's never been a palette swap of Peach. I don't know. Why Why, could, why are we mad at, at her face? <laughs> Look in the trailer, dude. Trust me. I mean, I... I listen. I promise you I'm not going to be as mad as you are about this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a you problem. Here she is looking pissed. And we like that about Daisy. I mean, uh, I'm not going to scrub through here to get a freaking close-up of Daisy's face. I'm really not that upset about it. Anyway, I'm excited about this game. When does it come out? Uh, Soonish, I want to say. June 25th. Oh, my God. June 25th. So a month away. I'm I'm sure we'll get a demo a little bit before that because we got a demo of Mario Tennis. So we we're getting demos recently. 
I think demos yeah. also help for online, uh, like testing the online. So yeah, we'll probably get a demo for that. Like at at least two weeks before the game comes out. Yeah. Uh, what slang word are you going to use, Bob and Will? What? What? I don't know. What slang? I don't know any slang. Um, like bussin'. Oh, we were supposed to pick a slang word to. We got to do that at the beginning of the show. Uh, next, next, next week, guys. We're going to need you to uh, just spam a bunch of weird slang like like that you use, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> use and we'll try to pick one and, and, and learn it. Uh, no cap bissin. All right. <laughs> yes. um, Migs Luna 100 bits. Nintendo should make new Mario Strikers, aka Soccer. I liked Mario Strikers a lot, and I didn't play it until like way later. Yes. There was supposed to be a Mario Strikers 3, but uh, it involves wrestling moves in it, and Nintendo canceled it because the moves were too violent. I thought that was a a pitch for a wrestling game. No, that was uh, Mario Strikers 3. I thought it was two separate pitches, like that. Like there was a company that was making like a. It was a. It was a. It was like a second party studio that was like working on stuff or trying to work on stuff with Nintendo, and they pitched a wrestling game. And, I think, and they tried. I can't to remember. Strikers. I think. It, I think it might have been whoever did Strikers Two, because they Mario straight up had like res, a wrestling outfit on. Yeah. Next level games made Mario Strikers Charged, which is which was the sequel. Mm-hmm. And then, let me just see. Macazard says, uh, "I thought it was a volleyball game. I think it was a rest. Maybe it was a wrestling and a volleyball game. Or I th- I th- honestly think this company was just trying to show them at everything they could do." Yeah. New Nintendo Switch Online games. Don't know if you talked about it. Bikers. In the it, that's what it was called. That's the vault. Yeah. Super Mario Spikers was volleyball and wrestling. It was made by Next Level Games, who did Strikers. Uh, yep. Here it so is. it was volleyball. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, here he is looking all weird. We we don't we don't like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like no wonder they didn't uh, make they didn't uh, get the okay. What is this? <laughs> this isn't real. I don't believe this one. <laughs> it might be. Oh, this is this says this concept off for strikers. Him with the with the this outfit. That's crazy. yeah, because Spikers was supposed to be like the the follow up to Strikers. Right. Right. So it might have been called Strikers Three. No, no, no. This is this is I've never seen this before. Him in the hoodie. This is different than the, the, right. the other concept art we were talking about. Um. Anyway, uh, somebody in the chat uh, just said new Nintendo Switch Online stuff. Yes, I I put that in the keep at the top. Okay. So thank you, M. Schroeder, for that. We got five games coming to SNES and NES collections for Switch, on Switch Online starting May 26th. So next week, boy, do we have video games in this collection, Bob? <laughs> That's about all I can say for it. I'm so excited. We have Joe and Mac. Yay! Uh, what else? That's probably the biggest, the biggest name in this group. We have Super Baseball Simulator 1.000, Caveman Ninja, also known as Joe and Mac, Magical Drop 2, Spanky's Quest. Those are all Super Nintendo games. Oh, my God. And then Ninja Jaja Maru-kun for the NES. Ninja Jaja Maru-kun. Act Razor Blazing Laser. I don't remember the... 
I can't start with Ninja Jaja Marukun. I got to do the whole thing. Does that translate into anything? I don't know what it is. I just, it's, uh, right. I think that's a name. Jaja Maru and then Kun is like, I don't uh, know. Um, it's like San. Yeah. Um, no, it's a freaking, uh, it's the, the We Shop Channel song. Uh, that's one of the games <laughs> in the song. Yeah. Anyway, I don't even, I honestly don't know what that game is. <laughs> I only know it from this song. Oh, that's the only NES right. one. Oh, God. Yeah, Here it is. The, that's the only NES one. Uh, the only game I'm familiar with is Joe and Mac, and that's mostly because I remember from Nick Arcade. You don't know Spanky's Quest? No, I don't know Spanky's Quest. The famous and I'll Spanky's say this. Quest? From this video, what they show of Super Baseball Simulator 1.000, whatever the hell it's called, this is a Super Nintendo game. This looks like a... Uh, an NES game if I had ever seen it. It looks terrible. Uh yeah. This looks like the game the baseball game we had on the Game Gear. Yes. It looks like identical to that. Which was also an 8-bit system. Literally the only thing that looks like it's 16-bit is is the is the batter. Yeah. Everything else is like super low low resolution. Um well, we're, we're we're getting worse and worse stuff here out of out of Nintendo. Yeah, it's, still don't have Earthbound. True. We there's a lot there's a lot that we don't. Yeah. Super Mario RPG. Super Mario RPG we don't have. That Fire Emblem game was a standalone release and it was timed yeah. exclusive. It wasn't part of this. If we get earthbound it might end up well no earthbound should be part of that uh if yeah. we ever get like a mother three situation that's gonna be mother a, three a is a different story thing. i don't know terry cruz is demanding mother three <laughs> so um anyway that's a it's it's unfortunate hopefully we're getting some yeah. game boy advanced or some game boy or something this year. Oh, here's something interesting. Uh, Nintendo Online Japan uh, will have Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War in their lineup. Instead of the baseball game. Uh, let's see. Oh, they don't have a trailer? Lame. <laughs> Oh, here it is. So, which one is that? Who fucking knows? Oh, this is different too. This fighting game. Weird. Hmm. And here it is. Just follow. That's because this probably was never uh, localized. Yeah, it looks like it's a Super Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, or sorry, Super Famicom. Fire Emblem game. Um. Yeah, this fighting game looks crazy. Yeah. Anyway, um. So of note, you can get uh the Japanese games. You just have to download uh the Nintendo Switch Online app from the Japanese eShop. Uh, it's it's very simple. Yeah. Um. You could do it. Uh. You, you just need to make a Japanese uh, account on your Switch, which is very easy. Just You just make a, an account and change the, the freaking your region to Japan. And then you just download yeah. the Switch Online app. And if you already have uh, a user that has Switch Online on your Switch, it'll just work. If the primary user on the Switch has Switch Online, you'll be able to play the Japanese stuff. Uh... Uh, is there a reason they roll out such weak titles for the NES slash SNES on Switch? It's because they've, <laughs> they're running out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes and no, because like I said, Earthbound's still not on there. Star, Star Tropics 2 is not on there. Mario RPG is not on there. Yeah, but there's got to be a reason why they haven't done that. There's got to be no good reason why Earth. There's no good reason why Earthbound is not on there. 
I'm sure there's a stupid reason, but there has to be a reason. Yeah. Uh, Super Mario RPG is probably because it's square and there's there's an issue yeah. somewhere. Um, um, anyway. Uh, moving on. Sony yes. announces new black and red dual sense controllers for the PlayStation 5 you still can't buy. What? I bought it. I pre-ordered it. What are they talking about? I think they mean the system. Oh, right. It's a little goof. Yeah. Ha ha. I got the polygon. <laughs> so these these do look great. And it's about time oh, because yeah. everybody has been wanting a black uh I was actually just thinking about modding a black uh, controller just just to have, um, <laughs> yeah, because it does look a lot better in black than it does in white. It does I gotta say. well? I mean, since the PS2, black has been Sony's color. Yeah, and it, like they all look good. All, all the systems look good in black, and this looks just as good. I'll say the white controller doesn't look terrible. Like, I, like I'm no. like I'm okay with it. Um, it does look like friggin' iRobot or like early two thousands future design. Yeah. Um, that red, though, is looking That real red is nice. sexy as hell. That is a sexy red. I'm all about red and black things, and that is right up my alley. I'm, I might just buy this just to have. I think the red costs more. I'm going to read the article. Sony has announced its first new colors for the PlayStation 5's DualSense controller, a cosmic red model that features a two-tone red and black design and an all-black midnight black version that brings to mind the classic PS2, PS3, and PS4 controller designs, meaning that they've all been black. <laughs> mm -hmm. Until now, Sony has only offered the DualSense controller in a black and white color scheme to match the PS5, which features a similar contrasting theme. So the new color options are certainly welcome ones. The midnight black option is particularly notable. The prime, the, the primarily white dual sense was a big departure of Sony's designs, which have largely tre trended towards black and gray consoles and controllers by default for the entire lifespan of the PlayStation brand. The new black option, technically still a two-tone design, with two different shades of black what is closer yeah, the, to those other controllers though where so where the the default controller is white yeah over here those are different that's a different shade of black than wow. the part of the controller that's always black i never would have i know <laughs> if they showed it to me like in person maybe but from this picture i would not have gathered that at all yeah this is like a this is like warmer and this is like cooler. Yeah. I wonder if I mean it's got to just be a different material. That's probably Yeah. It, well, yeah, it definitely is. They're both glossy. Yeah. Or like like semi-glossy. Weird. I wonder how that's going to look IRL. Uh the red is sick though. That's yeah. sick. Yeah. I I was so we got like in the mail a while ago we unboxed it a uh, a shell for the the where the black is. We yeah. got like it kind of looked like this color. Was it for where the black was? Yes. Or was it for what the white parts were? No, it was definitely the black. It was definitely where okay. the black was. I think Kevin Kenson ended up doing a video on it. And I was considering doing it, but now screw that, I'll just get this. Yeah. I pre-ordered it because I I do want to I mean they're sexy, but I also want to see what they look yeah. like. And I also want to make a PlayStation video. There's been no PlayStation 5 accessories, so I haven't done any PlayStation stuff. Anyway, right now, Sony has only announced new colors for the controller, although the PlayStation 5 console does feature removable face plates, or side panels, I think they mean. So it's possible that the company could introduce matching plates for the PlayStation 5 sometime in the future. Enterprising companies like D-Brand have already started to fill the gap, though, with their own third-party options. It's really just a sticker, though. I don't think it's an entire... Well, uh... Because I know there was that company that made full-on side panels for the PS5, and then Sony sent them a C and D. Um, I think is D brand. Oh yeah, no, D brand is selling plates. Dark like full-on plates. plates. Dark yeah. plates, they're calling them. That's kind of cool looking. Yeah. Maybe I'll get this to match the black controller. Ooh, the inside I looks sick. 
Yeah, I doubt this. I doubt this means that Sony themselves are gonna be putting out custom plates for the controller. They'll probably just keep the PS the for the system. They'll probably just keep the PS5 black and white because you know that they did this the last few generations and Microsoft did it too. They just released different color controllers, not necessarily different color systems to match it. Maybe I should buy this. I like how one of the footnotes is totally legal. When you look at the microscopic texture inside the dark plates, what do you see? If your answer is a familiar but legally distinct apocalyptic <laughs> spin on the classic PlayStation button shapes, you might be one of one of our lawyers. Uh, yeah, well, no, when this came out, they were very like, what are you going to do? <laughs> so, so they... So Dbrand has... Uh, uh, they made that like that like iPhone case or whatever that uh has that design on it that has all different logos from all different companies, and yeah. it feels like a legal issue. <laughs> like I know that they have licensing from all these different brands to make the cases, but there's no way they have the licensing to sell the Nintendo Switch logo. It feels weird. Something's weird about that, and I don't understand exactly how yeah. they're allowed to do that. Maybe they're just willing to see what happens. Yes. Um, but anyway, I'm interested in this. I might get this. Uh, wave, if you scroll all the way down, it tells you when the fifth wave of these <laughs> will be shipping out. It'll That'll be in June. <laughs> oh, so I guess I should do it now. How much are these? Yeah. I remember them being expensive. You have the disc version, right? Yes. Ooh, they come in different uh, colors. Oh no! It's, oh, they're on. It's a sticker for the uh, the middle panel. Oh, so you can matte black it. Yeah, fifty bucks. It's not bad. And, and then you get the. I think you have. Oh no, you don't have to get the middle part. Uh, but the middle part it's, is an extra twelve bucks. Yeah. And it looks like it's right now. It's on sale. <laughs> That's kind of st the, the 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 illegal uh, red code. Uh, <laughs> oh no! Wait, no, I, don't, I don't think they have any. Oh no, they do have a PlayStation freaking the symbols here, and there's the yeah. Nintendo Switch logo. Uh, but that does look sick, though. That looks pretty sick. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll get it. Anyway more about this controller the two new color schemes should be available to purchase sometime next month sony says that dates will be dependent on individual retailers the midnight black color scheme will cost 70 dollars, the same as the standard dual sense controller while the cosmic red will inexplicably cost 75 dollars a five dollar increase they did this uh they did this with dual shock 4 controllers and i think and the, the microsoft, microsoft does it with their colored systems yeah Uh, Fallen Kayaker says, isn't the red code the MKBHD one? Yes, it is. I believe it is. It's, um, it's the bullshit one for that price. No. <laughs> no, he means the red the re the red code uh, uh, skin on the D brand thing. Oh, yeah, I um, know that. Okay, yeah, what you said. <laughs> yeah, $5 more for a different color. I, th that makes me question, like, does that mean that they're just going to make PS5s that are black? If the black one is the same price as the white one no because it, it was weird because like last gen certain controllers were the lower price and i think those were you know either black or white or like maybe a limited edition color here or there but everything else is always five dollars more especially mm -hmm. camo color controllers the the freaking atomic purple xbox controller i got was i think five dollars more than a standard controller mm-hmm yeah, that's like the thing. I guess because like if you break your controller, you're just paying like the like the normal price for like a like a like a new one. But if you want the cool yeah. one, you gotta pay the cool premium, which happens to be five dollars. It costs five dollars more to be cool. But everybody uh, wants the multicolor, the different color one. You don't yeah. just get a bunch of you know black controllers or a bunch of white controllers you want the different colored ones to differentiate player one player two player three player four whatnot maybe 
I want to use the Atomic Purple controller as my default. Maybe my wife wants to use a blue one as her default, you know? Unless you break your controller and just need a new one. Then you save five yeah. bucks. Look at it that way. <laughs> or just wait till they go on sale during Black Friday, because that's usually when I buy my controllers anyway. True. Um, yeah, I pre-ordered... It, it says they go on sale later. I... I uh I pre-ordered it from Sony, so I'll get them when I get them. I'm hoping to make a short version, uh, like a short video on them, because there's not much to talk about. Ooh, pretty colors. Um, like one of those uh, YouTube shorts? No, not that short. That that are all the rage? No. Uh, the two new color schemes should be available to purchase sometime next month. Uh, oh. uh, according to Amazon, the black one will be released June 18th. And the red one is currently unavailable. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, so you can yeah. pre-order the black one on Amazon, but you can't pre-order the red one currently. Interesting. I'm going to link this in the chat with our... Well, the red one's probably sold code. out. Yeah, probably. There you go. If you want to pre-order the black one, you can. Um... Anyway, we got, where are we? Uh, we got Kate McCat with 10 bits. J John is the best because it's interchangeable with every single word, LOL. I don't, is John a cool hip lingo that we should know about? Yeah. Explain yourself. Explain yourself. Uh, you youngin. Our frame rates, uh, or we're dropping frames here for some reason. I don't know yeah. what it's about. I can't help you. Sorry about it. Um, moving on. We have mm -hmm. GameCube and PS2 officially retro. Oh, there's still a lot to talk about here. We can blast what? through this stuff. All right. Uh, the official Twitter account for the wonderful... Uh, retro Game Master Shinyan Arino uh, and his Let's Play show Game Center CX tweeted out today that since the aforementioned consoles, the PlayStation 2, the GameCube, and the Game Boy Advance uh, have all passed their 20-year mark, uh, Arino will be playing them and their games this season. If you're not familiar with Game Center CX, you can read here and here and here. A profile done back in 2007 for Wired Magazine, blah, blah, blah. So basically, because this, those systems are in particular twenty years old, that officially makes them retro. 20... And because this guy is playing, this guy is, will be playing them on his channel. That makes it retro. Twenty years. Yes. We're so old, Will. We are so freaking. We're old. dying by the day. I'll um, I'll never forgive the person who made that tweet. And I wish I saved it. It said. What you think is 20 years old, and it's an NES, and what is actually 20 years old, and it's a GameCube. Oh, I remember. Oh, I remember. Very fondly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I think we've had this discussion many times on this channel. I think a console is retro when it's two generations behind. So there's current gen, last gen, and retro. That's what I think. Yeah, I I agree with you on that. I'm st I've started to feel iffy on that because that means that the PS3 and mm -hmm. the 360 are retro. Correct. But can you really consider them retro when the games are not that dissimilar to? the games that are being released now. Yes, because at some point you have to let it go. <laughs> right. The Xbox by 360 the same... came out in 2006. Yeah, that was a 2005. Long... That was a long time ago, Will. <laughs> yeah. I know. No, I know. But and you know, we'll talk about this later. I mean, Grand Theft Auto 5 has been released on the PS3 ps4 and it's coming soon to the ps5 is that a retro game yes. you know skyrim <laughs> skyrim is on well, the ps5 and the ps4 is that a retro game 
it's, it's a last gen game, but is it, it also a retro game? The distinction is hard because yeah, in terms of Grand I, Theft Auto, they've been making so many changes to that game that it's not really retro anymore. It's similar to World of Warcraft. If you saw mm-hmm. what World of Warcraft looked like when it came out versus what it looks like now, it's totally different. So it's hard to call World of Warcraft a retro game. I'm just saying that like by the by the metric that we use here at the Wolf Den, mm-hmm. yes, the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 are retro consoles. My thing is that those systems kind of blur the line in terms of retro because retro has a distinct look and feel like you can look at it and you can say to yourself that's old that is very old but a lot of 360 and ps3 games not only hold up they're still like viable in today's market they're still available to purchase and play and feel good to play in today's market i so think, i think that is that's what i mean by there's like a blurred line there i think that's your oldness showing and i'm there with you because i just don't think it's that old when i look at when i look at some of those games i'm like this this looks fine to me or it plays fine yeah but if you show that to a 20 year old today they're gonna go oh it's like what i had when i was a kid Right. <laughs> They're going to be able to see right through it. And like, look, I know that like, you know, I like I can tell I can tell what a 360 game is by looking at it. There are certain ways you could tell. But in terms of like overall visual style, overall playability, you know, if it's a lot of it still holds up today. So I don't that's what I mean by like it, the line blurs a little bit. Listen, original Xbox. Yeah. Retro game. I recently played an original Xbox game. Retro as hell. No question there. The Xbox 360 game, it's a little little different. But I begrudgingly accept the fact that it is a retro console. Everybody hold on to your butts here. I'm going to try. I'm going to do something wacky to try to reset the stream without resetting the stream. Because we're dropping a lot of frames and everyone's complaining here. Uh, This won't affect the YouTube podcast. So uh, if anybody's listening to this in the audio, uh, you get a little special... You got a little special treat. All right. There you go. Do it. I'm trying here. What magic is Bob working on the other side of the screen? Who Uh, knows? I turned the VPN off and I turned it back on. I think I have to stop streaming. Oh, I'm going to freeze OBS. No. No. I freeze OBS. we're, We're done for, Will. Oh, great. Hopefully this... uh. That this has happened once before and it kept going. It says not responding. I'm gonna give it okay. like a minute. The fact that the little guy on Twitch is holding his head is actually a good sign, Will. That's a good sign. Okay. That means it's For working. Once. Oh, OBS is back, baby. Oh yeah. Okay. I think we're I think we're doing it. Let's do it. This is like in the sci fi movies where they turn the engines off on the spaceship and they do some yeah. wacky <laughs> stuff. That's what we just did. And yeah. we're back at full bandwidth, baby. There you go. That's how you do it. You, you, the you captain, motherfucker said it couldn't have been done. The captain just pulled a wacky one and got you back on course, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> anyway, uh, hopefully we don't drop frames anymore. Yeah. Th- this weird thing happens when, when I start the VPN. If it doesn't automatically go... Like sometimes it'll it'll go, it'll load and then stop at a certain point for like a few seconds and then go. Mm-hmm. That's when I know today's gonna be a bad day. <laughs> what I should do is restart the computer when that happens, but I was in a bit of a rush. But anyway, um, well, speaking of retro games and whether or not mm-hmm. Grand Theft Auto Five is a retro game, <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Five sold more than any game I've ever seen. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Jesus Christ. Uh, Grand Theft Auto V has now sold 145 million copies. 145 million. That is a lot. Yeah. Uh, Grand Theft Auto V has crossed yet another huge sales milestone. Take-Two Interactive has announced that the open world game 
has crossed 145 million units shipped to retailers, which is up from the 140 million three months ago. During the call, uh, 2K uh, delayed its upcoming arcade NFL game and announced that Borderlands Studio Gearbox will be releasing a new game. Who cares? Grand Theft Auto 5 has sold has shipped 145 million units. In total, the series has reached 345 million units sold to into retailers. That's a huge figure, but it's not the biggest franchise around as Call of Duty just hit 400 million units. The game is poised for even more growth in the future as Rockstar Games just announced that GTA 5 is headed to PS5 and Xbox Series X on November 11th. That's also the day that GTA Online standalone release will debut on next-gen systems. Outside of that, Rockstar recently announced plans to support GTA Online with more content updates throughout the summer. Um, there is no shot I'm buying this game again. I bought it on PlayStation 3 to play with my friends because yeah. they all had it on PlayStation 3 for some reason. Then they all started buying it again on PlayStation 4, and I said, no, I played it once already. I'm not doing that again. And it didn't carry any of your stuff over. No. So that was incredibly annoying. That wasn't like a normal thing back then for that to, for your yeah. your save data to be carried save over. Carry over. Yeah. Now it's kind of like you would kind of expect that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was so. I was like, no way, I'm playing that game again. That, that was a long. It was an awesome game. It was a long game. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't want to get it again just for the online. No. And I'm not. Yeah. No. I, I'm in the same boat again. I'm not buying this stupid game again. Although it's part yeah. of Game Pass, isn't it? Yes. I don't know. Like, yeah, Grand Theft Auto, that was a game that that, that requires a major time sink. And yeah. it's it's a game I've thought about buying again, but it's not a game I think I have the time to play again. I played it once. I got the experience. I loved it. I still say it's the best Grand Theft Auto game. Um, but not enough to buy it again on a, on a next gen on a current gen system. Yeah, I, I I mean being able to play it with friends is cool, and like I've wanted to, the online looks sick, and the way they've been adding stuff to it, and and like people make their own like race tracks and stuff, and it looks really cool. Yeah. Um. And people are, there's a whole community on Twitch of people role playing in Grand Theft Auto. Um. But I'm good. <laughs> So this makes Grand Theft Auto V, for context, the second best-selling game of all time, behind uh, Tetris. Minecraft. Minecraft. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, Minecraft. The I have bought multiple times. <laughs> the mobile version of Tetris, made by EA, is the third best-selling game of all time. The mobile version. The mobile version made by EA. Wow. Yeah. Where's Super Mario? On there. Uh, sixth. Wow. It. I should it, note that most of the top ten is Nintendo games. <laughs> so many people. I think half of 145 million people is almost half of the people in America. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh, let's plow through some more news here. Okay. Um, Target stopped selling Pokemon cards. Yeah. Uh, so apparently, due to increasing due to increasing reports of violent confrontations uh, <laughs> oh amongst God. collectors, it's not. Um, Target has temporarily suspended the sale of Pokemon cards and other trading cards in stores. The new policy will go into effect Friday, but customers began seeing signs in stores this week. This is part of a, an influx of people uh, collect like on the hunt to collect Pokemon cards, um, and it's caused big problems with Target and other collectors. Um, so much so that apparently a fight broke out in a Wisconsin Target over the trading cards. Uh, I think that there was also a fight. I think someone got stabbed over uh, baseball cards. No, someone got shot. Yes. Some got shot. Yeah. So there's an argument broke yeah. out over baseball cards, and uh, the other one of the guy. I think the guy got attacked and he pulled out a gun and claimed self defense. 
Um, yeah. So honestly, so I'm, that, on, I'm on Target's side here. They, like the Pokemon cards have, and I guess other types of cards have gotten way out of control. And I think it's yeah. totally fine for Target to be like, nah, we don't want this smoke. Yeah, it's... I mean, trying to get any sort of collectible from Target is already a nightmare, I can tell you from first-hand experience. But it's just it's crazy that it's come to this mm-hmm. for Pokemon cards. Yeah. Think of it, it's Pokemon cards. <laughs> it is. You're right. Um... I, I wouldn't be surprised if other companies follow suit after this. I mean, actually, Walmart yeah. doesn't care if you get shot in their stores. So, no, <laughs> they know. will sell you the gun to shoot somebody. Yeah, with. I don't know if they're going to take them off of their shelves. Yeah, um, they, there was a rumor that they were going to, but Walmart said no. It's not true. Yeah, no, we don't care. We want you to fight for your life when you come yeah. here. <laughs> uh, last thing, did you know the Wii U can burn eShop games to discs? What? I, I literally just saw this about two minutes before I put it in the keep, and I thought it was an interesting thing. Uh, oh, let me find... I'll just read the whole thing. Just like the Switch, the Nintendo's Wii U only shipped with 32 gigs of internal storage, or even less if you picked up the 8 gig white model. Uh, if you're the type of who buys games digitally, or you have a pretty beefy collection of Wii U eShop games, you probably had to make use of some form of external storage to keep all your games accessible. You'd be forgiven for thinking that your typical external hard drive was essentially your only option here, but it turns out that there's actually a way to burn your digital games to a disc. Not only that, but you can also play games directly from the disc too, meaning that you can essentially create individual physical versions of your Wii U eShop favorites. How does it work? Well, as explained by Will It Work in the YouTube video below, <laughs> you'll need to pack a DVD You'll need to pick up a DVD RAM disc. Note that your typical writable DVDs won't work here. When using a DVD RAM disc with a compatible DVD drive, your Wii U can format and communicate with the disc. From here, it's a simple case of transferring a digital game over and playing it as usual, just like you would any USB hard drive. As you might imagine, there is a catch. While you can store and run games on a disc through a DVD drive, the Wii U's own disk drive won't be able to read them. You'll have to keep that DVD drive handy. Wow. So it's not playing the game in the Wii U's disk drive. You have to actually connect an external DVD drive to the Wii U in order to play it. That is bizarre. And also yes. weird that it's taken this long for us to figure this out. I, well, guess, I mean, it's I, the Wii U. No, nobody really had it. That's it's a good point. Uh, I hope he like deleted it off of the Wii U and s- to see if it works. And it's not just like yeah. pulling it off of the the Wii U. That's so weird. Yeah. It looks like he does. It looks like he does that. Oh no! It straight up is moving the game off of the off of the disc. That's freaking. That's that's wild. So this mean this is good news though. This means that even after the Wii U, uh, like even after they remove the eShop like functionality or whatever, yeah, people can still develop games for the Wii U. That's what that means. Yeah, basically, you would just need a whole DVD RAM drive. Yeah, which, which I imagine <laughs> is not a normal thing that you could just get. I mean, you could probably just get it on Amazon, but I mean, like, it's not like yeah. nobody's got a DVD RAM drive just laying around. Yeah, I'm seeing how much they go for on Amazon. Yeah, me too. Uh, uh, looking for RAM drives is oh, here we go, thirty bucks RAM burner combo. There you go. Yeah, not not too crazy. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of them don't say RAM. Oh, well. Um, That's it for the news that we have. So that means... Oh, Will, you're so right. Yes, Bob. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! It's time for that. It's time for the tweet of the week. In case you yeah. didn't, in case you didn't get all that. 
Uh, this one is by Drew Wise, and he says, "Unknown cool S," and it's a it's <laughs> unknown. It's a Pokemon unknown, but it's a cool S. It's the it's the nineties S. If you're listening to this on a podcast, and you don't know what that is. Uh, you're probably better off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who is this guy? I know this guy. He's a designer, but he does. What does he do? I've seen his work before. You know how many? I've read at least two articles trying to find the origin of the '90s S, and nobody can figure it out. It's just a school thing. Yeah, but so, everybody in school knew how to draw it. Yeah, somebody did it at one school, and then it just carried on. Maybe yeah. somebody did it in like a like a like a stall, like a bathroom stall somewhere. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. There's some really cool guy out there who's getting no recognition yeah. for his for his uh, creation. I would just like to also point out that on my sidebar, Earthbound is trending because people are disappointed it was not included in the the Switch Online collection that was just announced. Well, somehow. I'm not surprised. Guys, we're going to talk to you for a hot minute. Yes. If you left a comment on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, Wolf Den Podcast, this is the part of the show where we will answer you. And of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. We got comments from Kali Motion who says, catching up on the episodes and no matter how much the world has changed lately, it's nice to see a wo- the wolf, the, the waffle versus pan <laughs> waffle v pancakes dawn of breakfast debate still rages on here in the wolf den. It, it's not really a debate for us. Yeah. <laughs> we, we know who who comes out on top it's just like mm-hmm. we just have to explain ourselves you know we, yeah. we have the we have the proof it's just we, it's just getting all of you on the same page you know yeah uh may the goo be with you all right <laughs> hello okay. wolf bros just a small suggestion y'all should make the wolf den podcast daily okay so i never run no. out of episodes <laughs> let's do it work okay we'll just do two hours a day well how's that sound to you yeah that is miserable go on kidding obviously but do you have any podcast recommendations because as lovely as your voices are i can only listen to the same podcast so many times honestly you know what if you want us every day you should just subscribe to twitch.tv slash wolfden because i'm here like every other day you're missing out on the other content that i have here um but in terms of podcasts i don't really listen to podcasts that much anymore i usually listen yeah, to more like go Ever places since driving to work exactly yeah i, I like, like yeah podcast uh stuff has been I, I listened to this one podcast my japanese pod because they talk about speaking japanese it's like a it's like a lesson um other than that i haven't listened to the rooster teeth podcast in a long time but I, I used to like that um yeah i like i'll randomly come across an episode of a podcast to listen to but like i won't go into the whole like right now, I found this podcast called TV Guidance Counselor, where the guy just picks a random epi- a random issue of TV Guide from like back in the day, and him and his guests go through it and like talk about all the shows that are that TV Guide is talking about. Mm-hmm. It's and I'm only listening to it because the lead singer of the Donnas is on it, but it's interesting. I, I don't know if I listen to every episode. That, you would, you would do that. I would. I'm a sick man. Uh, we can show, but our that's friends. how like, I've been listening. That's how I've been listening to podcasts now. Just one episode randomly of random podcasts. We can chill out our friends' podcasts. We got uh, yes, uh, directly to you, which is the Fanatics Four podcast, which is my top mm-hmm. recommendation. Uh, that's AJ's podcast. Um, what else? We got Spawncast, of course. Uh, you should know what that is already. Um, mm-hmm. Wood has his own podcast now. Uh, that is on the says he's doing it right now at the same time we're doing it um bastard who else do we know that's a podcast that's all i can think of at the, off the top of my head yeah um oh uh i i got yelled at for not talking about e and scootish's podcast uh yet to be determined. oh yes i think that's that's what it's called because I thought it was Jiggy's podcast, but it's not. 
Anyway, uh, what else do we got here? We got, oh, AJ. We got Fnatic 4 here. Games run hey, poorly on Mac because developers rely on standard suites of tools to make development as straightforward as possible, i.e. DirectX, Vulkan, OpenGL, etc. And Apple generally opts out of supporting those in favor of building proprietary solutions. They could run games. Nothing about their hardware limits it. Developers just don't have the bandwidth slash desire to redesign their games with so many discrepancies in the needed development tools because of the catch-22 of mac has no games because no one buys macs for games because rinse and repeat i think it's similar to uh why it's hard to develop for a system that doesn't have a lot of sales <laughs> yeah <laughs> like publishers will opt not to develop for a system that doesn't have a lot of sales because it's a pain in the ass to do it for um yeah i think direct x could be developed for mac it's just Apple well, is a pain in the ass to, to to work with because they're so strict. And why do why would they? Why would DirectX even go through that trouble if uh, nobody's gonna buy the game on there anyway? Well, Apple has a, a their own version of like DirectX or OpenGL, whatever. It's called Metal. And in terms of like how it works, according to Wikipedia, it functions very similar to OpenGL. So so Apple has the capability of getting like they have they have the capability. The problem is, I think at least it's it's on a, a higher level within Apple where they'll show they'll play they'll pay lip service to games. They'll introduce versions of metal and they'll show some games on their Macs or their phones or whatever, show how good they are for games, but then they don't take it any further. If they really wanted to Apple has the capability to introduce a new version of Metal that can work very easily with all these other standards to get help get developers to port their games over to Mac. They could do that in a heartbeat. They can do that tomorrow, and the entire Steam library can be available to you next Wednesday. They could do that, but they don't. Because gaming is always just a thing you can do on Mac in addition to all the other things you should be doing on Mac. Oh, uh, I, mean, I mean, Metal, they made the switch to Metal like that. They just decided one yeah. day, we're going to use Metal now. Everybody's got to use Metal. Yeah. Um, and that was very frustrating to someone like me, who was using Mac to, to uh, as a video editing software. Um, yeah. So that's also probably really frustrating to Mac developers, too. Like, all of a sudden, yeah. oh, by the way, OpenGL, can't use that anymore. Throw it out. Now you got to use metal. And that's probably really discouraging for um, Mac developers. And I'd imagine that's a lot of what uh, AJ's saying here too. Well, think of it like this. So for years they've been, they've had uh, Intel based Mac computers running on x86 architecture. And now they've switched over to the N1, the M1 chips. They created a software called Rosetta so that all your x86 uh, programs will just work on M1 Macs. And according to every review I've ever read of an M1 Mac, it just works. It works seamlessly. There's no real problems. You can use all your programs. No, no questions asked. Theoretically, they could develop something similar for gaming. They could develop like a new version of Metal that can easily transfer over uh, games that run on OpenGL or DirectX or something similar, but they choose not to because gaming is not important to them. Uh, there's a, a new rumor. I think Bloomberg put it out. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, e just sent it to me. They're thinking the the summer, sometime over the summer, they will be announcing and releasing uh, the M1 MacBooks finally. The, the the you know the pros the, like the like the, the pros like the ones that aren't 13 inches right um, that'll be interesting and a mac pro apparently which would Ooh. be phenomenal news yeah for me yeah uh anyway according to apple more than 148,000 applications use metal directly and 1.7 million use it through high level frameworks as of june 2017 that is a lot that is a that is a lot a lot. Trevor Steinberg says complaining about gaming on Mac. The Wolf Boys clearly never played a Nanosaur. I don't know what that game is. Nope. 
I'm pulling it up on screen. Nanosaur gameplay. And then we got one more comment from uh, Matthew Hammond who said, I guess neither of you have played marathon games that Bungie made before Halo. These were fun games. No, but I know about it. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard those are actually good and apparently still available. Um, there was something about also one of the first game. It was one of the first games to use mouse look. Yes, that's what I, I was going to say in my in my magnum opus. My video about <laughs> modern game control schemes. I talked about Marathon, but I forgot why. And that must be it, because it used f- yeah. a free look mouse. By default, probably, because I was talking about yeah. the control, the default control schemes. Um, this game looks like shit. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, now we're in the chat for a minute. I'm mad. Yeah. Someone... Uh, uh, Best Moroccan gamer says, why does Will's camera look so much better than Pops? I'm mad because this is like a this is like a freaking two thousand dollars setup that I'm using for the camera. I'm just washed out. That's what it is. I didn't change I didn't change anything. I just turned it on and just let it go. Um look the dynamic range is beautiful though, right? Can you at least admit that? <laughs> Anyway. I am gonna eventually see if my other camera can be used as a as a webcam. Just for but I got other things I gotta just throw up the C three hundred, dude. <laughs> I'm not the C three hundred would break the tripod I'm using. Uh how's today's video doing? Terrible. It's ten out of ten. <laughs> today's video was a bit of an experiment because it's a it's a shorter video. Um Yeah. Yeah, it's doing pretty bad. I uh, changed the title a couple times. Uh, but all, all videos are doing pretty bad right now across the board, so. Uh, Lenosis with a dumb take. He's the king of dumb takes. <laughs> says, uh, how is the PS3 retro if the Switch has less horsepower or is the Switch retro too? That has nothing to do with being retro. Yeah. Retro is more about when you came out. Yeah. Now, um, it's true that there are there are retro systems being released now, like the Sega Genesis Classic, the NES Classic, the Evercade is specifically focused on retro games. But in terms of like current high profile gaming devices, no, the Switch is a current gen system. My it uh, plays current gen games. It plays graphically beautiful current gen games. My coffee scale uh, doesn't have a lot of horsepower. It's just a coffee scale. It just weighs coffee. It's got a microchip in it, but all it does is weigh coffee. Is it retro because it doesn't have a lot of horsepower? The dumb take. Yeah. You're stupid. This. Your coffee scale is probably slightly more advanced than my OXO scale. It does the same goddamn thing. I have an OXO scale. Does that make scale my scale too. retro? I have an OXO scale, and you got me the Hario one. Yeah, because I, I, because I figured there was some reason why you wanted a, spe- a coffee specific scale, and then you told me the reason. And I'm like, all right, that's a very Bob reason to want an extra scale. Honest, and honestly, the one you got me doesn't do the thing that I thought it did. <laughs> really, <laughs> but it is still better than all the other scales that I have because it's more accurate. Because my other ones, uh, they, w- so I got one that doesn't do a decimal place. Okay. Just doesn't do a des- it just doesn't do tenths of a gram, which is really annoying. Mm-hmm. And then so it just rounds up, I guess. Then I have one that rounds to the nearest fifth. But it does in between, it just seems to always go to the fifth. You know what I mean? Right. But not fifth, yeah. half. It like rounds to the nearest half. Which is weird because it does have one to five and five to ten, but it always goes to five for some reason. So right. I stopped using that one because obviously it's inaccurate. The Hario one is the most accurate one that I have, and that's the one that you got me. Um. Anyway, Meta Session, you boys going to podcast in person again once you all are fully vaxxed and the coast is clear. Miss seeing you together. Um, we're just far away from each other. It's really yeah. Uh, I still live on Long Island. Bob now lives in Brooklyn. Um, and it would be a pain in the ass for me to drive all the way out there or for him to come all the way out here or even to meet somewhere in the middle. 
So this is the Wolf Den podcast. Yeah, deal with it. Um, yeah. I mean, it, we'll do things in person together eventually. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's, you know, it's a pain in the ass to do it like during the week and stuff. Um, yeah. Although I... We'll be we'll be sh- shaking things up here eventually once things start to open up. Um, yeah, th- things will be things will happen. We're, we're gonna we're gonna ha- we're gonna freshen things up every once in a while. Um, both pick one favorite game of all time. Says gamer lady. Favorite game of all time for me is the original Super Mario Brothers. Resident Evil Four. There you go. That's that. Uh, Edward Bova has a lot that he wants to say. Nintendo just released yeah. uh, Zelda and Loftwing Amiibo reveal trailer. The Zelda S- Skyward Sword HD Instant Skywarp. And don't forget, rumor we're getting a Pokemon Presents broadcast next month. Uh, I saw the Pokemon Presents thing. I just didn't think it was important because it's like an announcement. Yeah. It's like news of an announcement of stuff we probably already like. You know, like we already know there's a bunch of Pokemon games coming out. Um, yeah. So that's a that's a weird that's a weird thing to like have a news story about. Uh we're uh what else? Warner I did, Brothers see, games I did see a picture of the a... Zelda amiibo. It looks like a Zelda amiibo. Looks nice. Warner Brothers games reportedly being split up due to AT and T Discovery deal. Will had some tweets about that, I think. Or a tweet about I was it. mostly concerned well. So he's talking about how it looks like. So if you don't know, AT and T is now buying Discovery Media, which owns Discovery Channel, HGTV, all the crap your mom watches, um, and it, it's going to merge that with Warner Media to form a new super conglomerate. In the process of that, it looks like some of WB Games, WB Interactive, is going to be sold off. We don't know if that means Rocksteady is going to get sold off. Probably not. If Nether Realm is going to get sold off, probably not. My tweet, my concern was about was about not once in any of these articles do they talk about what the state of DC Comics is. And I don't mean movies based on DC Comics. I mean the publishing company that is known as DC Comics that has existed since in some form or another since 1930, whatever. I'm very concerned for the state of that company because I feel like of all the companies that are a part of this merger that's the one that they can drop it like it's hot and just <laughs> license out their characters instead of just creating new comics for these characters. That's my concern. AE Light in the chat says, do you have a video on how to get audio from a PS5 through Elgato into computer? Uh, you should just watch my video on how to stream from a Nintendo Switch because it's the same exact concept. Uh, you're just using a PlayStation 5 instead of a Nintendo Switch. Um, the thing no. that every that seems to confuse it's very simple, but for whatever reason it confuses everybody. They all just like they, they just, their brain just turns off. You want a splitter. That's it. You just want audio from your computer and audio from your from your from your game to split into your headphones. And the way to do that is you plug your you plug your PlayStation Five into an Elgato and then have the out go to a monitor. And then hopefully your monitor has a headphone jack. And that's where you're going to listen to the game from. And that way, Mm -hmm. it'll still go through OBS. And then everybody can hear it and you can still hear it. Because if you listen to it through OBS, it'll be a little bit delayed. And it will drive you fucking crazy if you you care about that stuff. Um, Hearing a jump from Mario, like a frame late, is... It, it's torturous. <laughs> um, ask his friend Jerry about it. Oh my god, I I feel like I want to like clip that out. There was like there's a, <laughs> I've explained this to Jerry like a thousand times. Yeah, because it's just all you need is a splitter. It, it, right, it's right. really hard to wrap your head around for some reason, but the answer is just a splitter. You want audio from your game, audio from your computer to go through your headphones. That's it. Mm-hmm. And I explained it to him like a thousand times. Then I explained it on stream because he was ready to stream. He was ready to go. He was ready to stream. And yeah. once he went to turn it on, he was like, what do I do now? And I, I was like, you thought you had it and you don't. <laughs> it was bad. He I, he couldn't. He couldn't freaking wrap his head around it. Anyway, watch my video about streaming from the Nintendo Switch. 
the delay in OBS uh, doesn't bother me at all, to be honest. It doesn't bother. There's a lot. So it doesn't bother some people. Like E, for example, streams from he just listens to the audio through OBS. It drives yeah. me fucking crazy. I can't. I can't do it. I can't listen to the game audio through OBS. It's not the, the delay. It's so subtle, but I will. Ne- you can actually also play the game through OBS. Apparently, like like Elgato pitches it like that. That would also right. there's a delay, and you don't want any delay at all or any lag when you're playing a video game. You want as little lag as possible. So for the love of God, plug it. In, have the out of the Elgato go to the, your monitor and listen to the audio that way. So the Elgato chat link will work. Yes, they. That's a recent thing Elgato made. They they finally made a splitter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, what else do we got? Uh, MC uh, McGrath C2. What is in all the binders behind? Well, uh, those are my wife's lesson plans. Uh, oh my God. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of them. She teaches a lot. Uh, Tyler 1053. Will, should I start with Resident Evil 1 remake or Resident Evil 7? I'm interested heavily in both. So I'm going to say Resident Evil 7 because that's a clean break for the series. It starts a new... doesn't start a new continuity, but it starts a new story overall um, that goes forward from there. If you, if you like it and you're interested, then maybe go back and play Resident Evil 1 Remake. Just be aware you're going to play a fairly different kind of game. Um, that's forgot, my hot take on that. I forgot to read these donations. Uh, Leo Aguilar <laughs> gave us five bits and said, "Can't can't wait for E three because we don't know so many titles that are being announced, especially for Nintendo. Uh, lower those expectations because <laughs> they might just not announce that much stuff, and uh, it might be incredibly disappointing. So expect yeah. nothing to come out of E three. Honestly, uh, I'm sure we'll get something, but expect nothing." Um, I think we we did we skip a story. We skipped that. It's heavily rumored that uh, Bethesda Starlink is going to be Xbox PC exclusive. Right. Like um, no, like no PS port at all. Uh, that's a shame. Yeah. Um. Also, it's rumored that uh, Tom Cruise is going to be in it. <laughs> That's like a real thing. I highly, I highly doubt that. I don't know if Tom Cruise is aware of what video games are. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have Mega Dragon again with twenty five bits. Update, Bob. On my quest to be a successful artist, I drew myself a woman the other the other day that I'm actually proud of. Congratulations. Keep doing it. Do it a thousand nice. times. Uh, the real MKH with eight months. Thank you so much. I'm sorry that we took so long to answer all of those. Uh, Ta- Tech Nanner says Silk Song will not be at E3 according to their spokesperson. Yeah, they said uh, that they have nothing to announce for a while, uh, which is also unfortunate because that's all that's all everybody ever talks about when they're talking about indie games on the Switch. Hmm. Willow Davis says if Tom Cruise was in it, that would be bussin'. <laughs> Can we talk about the SNL skit, bros? No, we can't. Which SNL skit? I'm assuming he means the I, Elon Musk Wario skit. Oh no, no, absolutely not. I saw the Muppets one, and I saw the Michael Jordan one. Those were those were all right. Muppets. <laughs> there was it wasn't like the Muppets. It was like they they made like a mock up of Kermit and of Sattler and Waldorf, and then. Uh, Keegan Michael Key and Keenan Thompson were the security for Kermit. So every time Sattler and Waldorf would heckle them, they would come out and yell back and tell them to stop, or they'd throw them out of the theater. That sounds good. Is that actually, it wasn't bad? I actually, like that. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Uh, I think uh, we're done. All right. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. 
Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on the YouTube channel Wolf Den Podcast so that you can watch it on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you listen to this show, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on those respective stores. Um, who do we raid today? Yacht Club Games is playing Mega Man 3. There you go. <laughs> um, who else do we got? Anyway, I'll be on uh, Thursday, obviously. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Every time I say maybe, I don't stream. So uh, don't hold your breath. I will have a new video on Thursday. Uh, I have an ad in it that I think is pretty good, and I think everybody will enjoy it. Um, we're going to raid... We're just going to raid AJ. AJ's on. He's playing Smash. Everybody say hi to AJ and Lee. He's playing with Lee. And I'll see you all later. Make sure you turn on notifications on this Twitch so you know when I'm live so you don't miss anything. Um, Enjoy yourselves. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.